tornado! Rob What's up, everybody? This is Dominic D'Angelo of SEScoops.com, and I am here today on the Premier Streaming Network. It is <laughs> episode 24. I am here. It's one of a kind with RVD. And guess who I'm here with, guys? It's RVD. Wow. Hey. Oh, geez, what are you doing here? Dude, what are the odds, bro? I can't, I can't right. believe it. What I'm doing here is uh, feeling awesome. I hope you are too. Uh, hi, everybody. Thanks for watching me on AEW. I had a blast. I felt good, man. Felt good out there in the ring uh, all the way through it. And uh, felt good afterwards. And then afterwards, I walked through and bam, there's Ric Flair. I'm like, what? What are you doing here, dude? And um, I thought it was a really good show. Good energy. Always awesome to be in Philly. Um, how long do you think it's going to take till somebody steals my uh, spinning leg drop to the to the back? That, uh, Dude, that was fucking <laughs> that sick. I did <laughs> but um, not long at all, I say. We'll be seeing mm-hmm. that real soon. But, um, dude, uh, every time I get in the ring, I'm uh, feeling uh, better and better. So that's how it is, like, uh, when you're – um, when you're on the, if you, if you do it regularly or myself, anyway, I should use first person. If I'm doing something regularly, then it's like, I'm, uh, uh, you know, working on, working on the craft, you know, looking at it, uh, to, uh, tweak, to do improvements, to show something that I didn't show last time, uh, whatever. But when they're all one-offs, there's really not that much put into it. Cause then it's more like, Hey, people want to see you do the shit that they used to see you do to show them. Give him a roll of thunder, give him a frog splash. But um, it's it's been cool to ha- continuously be uh, you know um, part of this uh, part of this momentum, and it looks like uh, looks like me and Hook are uh, kind of engaged now. You guys so, uh, are DFS yeah. right now, I think. <laughs> it looks, looks like uh, if we looks like we could have a reason to see some more of RVD besides. Being such a damn good wrestler, because uh, now it looks like I got a position uh, mentoring uh, Hook, and, and I'm enjoying that too. And he's, he's, he, it's really cool. He's, I like him, and also it's, uh, it's really cool. And it's cool how the crowd takes to it because of, because uh, of Taz and uh, and me going way back. So, really now, cool. you guys kind of assimilate a little bit more. Like, uh, is Hook kind of? Like you got kind of vibing pretty well backstage, everything like that is yeah, kind of yeah, and shit. Yep, uh, get along with him a lot better than I used to get along with his dad. <laughs> I know <laughs> that's a good start. Yeah, <laughs> took me so hooks took me like, twenty years. Damn. <laughs> took me twenty years to come around to being able to be able to meet Taz on the same page and and be able to uh, talk. But um, but no hooks. He's uh, he's really cool and obviously um, already looked up to RVD, so that uh, that goes a long way when it when it comes to uh, building a relationship. You know, and all the guys there, you know, are really respectful and cool, and everyone always says that. Fans too, always. You know, I grew up watching you. I know. Yeah, Everybody. I know. I'm aware. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you. <laughs> you don't remember me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> well. So when you're wrestling with Hook, are you seeing similarities between him and his dad too? And all that? I, I, I not, not really. I mean, just maybe a little bit in the move set, you know. But I mean, mm-hmm. uh, I kind of forget uh, that he's that he came from Taz's scrotum bag, you know. When I'm <laughs> when I'm out there, he's because he's he's his own person, you know, and just like. Any of the wrestlers, you know, uh, big personalities. So as far as just, uh, and I don't mean that he's a big extrovert by any means, you know, quite the opposite. But but what I mean is that you know he's he uh, stands on his own. So when when I'm teaming with him, I kind of forget about that. I'm not thinking about his dad. I'm just thinking about boom. There's there's Hook, my partner out there. Uh, he's in trouble. You know, tag me in. I'm fresh. And then, you know, afterwards when I'm celebrating, then dad comes to mind again a little bit. I'm like, yeah, let's let's do that pose. <laughs> Did you guys do the pose this time? Oh, yeah. Did you? Okay, because I didn't see a picture of it or anything on it. I was like, I hope they did something. 
was like looking on the, when I was watching TV. I was like, hey, are they going to do it on the air? I want to see it on the air. <laughs> Hook did this really cool thing where he points his thumbs at himself. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. It sure wasn't the goose thing. You didn't do, do the goose. Thing. No, but um, I, I did see a third version uh, the other day, and it, it's fist, it's fist closed, and it's it's this. That's what. Uh, wow. Somebody was. I like it when you you know. Oh, I like it you do that. You know, I always do this with you. I uh, flex with you, Rob. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. I don't know. I mean, that one's closer than than this. I guess at least. Right, the Linda McMahon. <laughs> Some people see that. Some people see this. Right. Some people. Some people see this. Oh, oh shit! Oh, Wait, how'd you do? Holy shit! Break. Wow! Damn, it's stiff. Jeez. I am stiff. Holy smokes! That's a shoot right there. Mm. Um, we'll we'll touch upon a little bit more in AEW in a little bit. I did want to start off. Uh, by the time people, everybody will be able to hear this. It would be Hello's Eve. Rob, I don't know if I've ever asked you, are you a horror movie guy at all? Do you like scary movies? Um, I wouldn't say I'm a horror movie guy. And yeah. I like a good scary movie. It's not something that I do often. Katie's not really into them um, because it's Halloween. She's, she's talking a little bit, you know, she's going a little bit out of her comfort zone. But it's, it's definitely not something that... Uh, that, that I track down. Sure. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm pretty much the same way. I kind of get into more of the spirit, obviously when Halloween rolls around, but I'm not like actively seeking out horror movies. Now, to be honest, I don't think I've even watched anything yet this year, but um, is there anyone that stand out to you that you're like, Oh, I, I, I love the Simpsons um, Halloween specials. Yes, the tree house of horrors. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I uh, we watched something at the hotel room the other day and whatever it was gave me the impression they were going to show all the old ones leading up to it. But if they did, or if they are, then I can't, I can't find it. I was looking for it on direct TV and I got something to record. I think it's the new one. They're in like season, what, 35? 30, or yeah, something 30, like that. I think something, they started like at least. 39. Yeah, 39? Wow, that's amazing. Amazing. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. And I remember uh, before they had their own show when the Simpsons were part of the Tracy Allman show. That is right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how OG I am. I remember when uh, Fox was brand new, brand new channel, Risky. Come Were you out. married with children guy too? Absolutely. Everybody was. Everybody was. It's so yeah. good. Yeah. And did you know too that uh, the Bundys were named after King Kong Bundy and yeah. the neighbor, the Rhodeses were named after Dusty? I did know that. Yeah. Pretty wild. Pretty yeah. wild. Okay. What do you have? A standout episode when it comes to uh, the Halloween Treehouse of Horrors, or, or or I guess little segment that they do because they do three three shows in one show of the Treehouse of Horrors. No, I can't name anything uh, specific. I just love how they kill the characters. Off. I know, me too. <laughs> Makes it extra special. It does. As a kid, it would be neat, but it also creeped me yeah. out because I'm like, I love Homer, I love Bart, and <laughs> it's like crazy shit, like the zombie episode. Oh man, so many good. Yeah. Movies. If they are doing a marathon or something, um, I hope I find it in time. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, I love The Simpsons. Uh, really set the tone for a sense, my sense of humor, I think. It was when, when I was a kid, the scariest movie to me, my whole childhood, was The Exorcist. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, uh, but, you know, I watched it before I should have been old enough to. Like, I remember when it would come on, uh, being told, go to bed or whatever and like peeking around the corner and saying i remember watching the bed bouncing up and down with that bitch tied to it yeah and, and i thought that was going to happen to my bed i'm laying in there and i'm just thinking like the devil is under my mattress <laughs> under my box springs and is going to start you know lifting the bed and shaking it around and stuff and uh, that movie scared the hell out of me and it would come on at least once a year and we'd always watch it and and always had that same effect on me like uh you know, back then, like Satan was real too. That was a part of everybody's life. Yeah. You know, was avoiding that motherfucker. And had the satanic panic, all that shit going on too at the time. 
Like of when course it came that. To, like, that's like in the eighties, I think. Like uh, when they went after the rock bands, or yeah, after rock bands, and I think Dungeons and Dragons, like was yeah. you know, and people yeah. were like, oh, that's satanic, and this, you know, the uh, all the AC or whatever, you know. Uh, but it really was. It really yeah. was. And I, I, there was a documentary that I watched. That used to scare the shit out of me, because it was all like they were just proving everything, like all the. All the albums that have to have Satan on the cover and the names and what they're singing about. And then, like, I remember uh, Dio, right? James Dio. Yeah. Turn it upside down. It says devil. And, like, they went through a lot of hard work to make those w- letters appear to be different letters upside down. And then, and then there was playing the music backwards. You could play another one rides the bus backwards. And it'd say, um, he is... Uh, the in, internal one, I don't know, it was something. He is the holy one, Christ your infernal. I'd be like, I leave you to all you, or Christ your infernal. But it was scary even hearing that as a kid, hearing the, yeah, that, oh that music backwards with that creepy voice. Uh, and that was, yeah, I remember the documentary was telling me that they put all that stuff in there on purpose and Satan did that, you know, to win you over. And, and what's weird is now, as an adult, I just realized maybe that was one of the things environmentally that, that built my values now, but I, and I've said this publicly, I think that music subconsciously controls people. I don't listen to it nearly as much as most people or enjoy it as much as, as most people. And I feel like that while the music is going and, they, and people are, whether they're singing the words or singing it in their head or just rocking their head or whatever, they're being controlled to an extent to, to be driven by the music. I don't see how you could argue that. I think um, it's a fair point. It very yeah, whether it's good or bad, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I'm just saying like that, I always, as an adult now, I've said that I I, I prefer to have, to, to, to be able to think, have the, the music off a lot of times um, and, and let my brain go where it's gonna go instead of uh hitching a ride from the dj that's you know what i a lot of the times i'll listen i listen to music all the time like if i'm working out or anything like that and like yeah i ride on that it gets my head out of my head of what i usually think about and so mm-hmm. very much to that point i think you you got a very valid point on that yeah i never thought i never put that together with that documentary i watched as a kid yeah. but holy crap that's uh that probably opened up that at least that door doorway of of me thinking because because I know it's true. I mean, it definitely at least uh, you can tell by the way people gyrate or and they want to they want to be yeah. they love it. But it's everywhere, 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 and that's what I've always said. Like it, it's not just a thing. Music could just be a thing, but it's a thing that's part of every other thing. So mm-hmm. if you're watching Married with Children, and it starts with music, you know. Love it, Mary. It's part of it, right? And your alarm yeah. goes off, and it's music uh, to wake you up, and it's fucking uh, music uh, to watch wrestling. You know, every wrestler goes out to music, so it is really an, an overall encompassing entity. And I've noticed because I don't subscribe to it the way everyone else does, uh, and I'm not saying I hate it, but it is fucking everywhere, and it definitely does control people, at least to to an extent. They're, absolutely they and you, you watch a television show and the the motion rises and they play music behind it to to get you caught up into it even more even to that extent there is there what's is great there. what's what's not talked about nearly enough is the dance face like i always say that uh and point that out to people everyone when they dance i don't dance you know music doesn't move me that way and it doesn't mean i want to like it used to be like saying that people go oh you can do it watch no i didn't say I can't. I don't <laughs> want to. I can't imagine why anybody wants to. At least dudes, girls. It looks like if they're you know you look at their body and it's like a kind of like artistic sometimes. And then I don't know. I mean Michael Jackson could fucking move, but I mean like dudes that are on the dance floor going like this. How are they having fun? I have no idea. Right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't enjoy that. You know. But um, the dance face is hilarious because. Everybody has the most ridiculous dance faces, as if the music's taking them over. And I'm always pointing them out because we were watching Shark Tank last night. And I was like, "Look at Mark Cuban's dance face." He's like, "Ooh, ooh, 
you know, as if it's like fucking, what did what did it do? It just fucking went up his ass or something, and and then and then there's other music and other people are like, mm. you know, and it's like they do that and they don't even realize it because they're performing. Because I think that's what dancing is is performing, uh, and to and you know. Um, it involves the face. I ruined it for my evil ex one time because anytime she would start to dance, she'd do this stupid thing where her eyes like roll up and she'd be like, ew, and her eyes would like oh. roll up. And then one time I was just asking her, it was a serious question. I said, what, what is that? That when you start dancing and your eyes go up to the top of your head, is that like, I mean, is that like a dance move or, or what? And she was like, I, I don't know. It's just something I do, and I like, totally ruined it for her, so she could never fucking enjoy when music came on again. And she wanted to be her st- get into her stupid performing character, you know. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. If you notice that, it's not talked about enough. The way that people look at each other, you know, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're like, hey, like, uh huh, right? Like a suggestive look, you know? Or like, yeah. I don't know, man. I try to translate. Some of these fucking funny dance faces. And it depends on the music, I'm sure. But oh, yeah. I love that. And again, it's something that's not talked about enough that's right in front of our face all the time. I love it. I would love to just fucking... If you're going to have me on the uh, at the dance, I'm just going to record people's faces and shit. That's, that's the only way I can imagine having a good time. If we're ever together and I start dancing, Rob, you got to record me because I want to see what I look like. Dude, you have a fucking great dance face, I'm sure. Do you think so? <laughs> I I bet you don't even know about it, dude. I, I, know, I didn't like, even think about this, Rob. Team. Yeah, I bet I'm like something like that. It's gonna be. It's gotta be crazy. Where do people right? learn that though? I mean, you just I don't mock know. like you just mock what you what you saw on TV or something. Maybe I like watch Boogie think? Nights and then I saw them dancing and in there. And you said, "Hey, that looks cool. I want to do that." All right. No, I, I always figured. Done. I always had a theory like watching dudes dance and watching girls dance and i always thought that the straight dudes were only dancing because they wanted to get close to the chicks and that was how to get the girls and i always thought that you know um but i know some straight dudes like dancing i'm sure there's a lot of gay dudes that don't like dancing so it's not like a a complete absolute blanket statement but i don't believe in absolutes but overall you know that's something that gay dudes uh, and women are usually uh, better at than the, the straight dudes. They always look funny out there dancing. And people even laugh at them. Like, you're out there and you're performing, and everybody laughs at each other, too. So you're yeah. like really putting yourself in a vulnerable spot, you know, like, judge me. You know? <laughs> <Go on. laughs> and then like, look at that guy over there. I'm an idiot. <laughs> but anytime anybody says that to me, points somebody out, like, oh, my God, look at that guy. Unless he's, like, really, really being ridiculous, I'm looking and I'm like, they all look ridiculous to me. Right. No way you can kind of look serious when you're dancing. So, well, from my perspective, anyway. But that's me <laughs> being the alien, the platypus that I am. Which you yeah. said you didn't notice. I had a platypus on the back of my outfit in my AEW match, and uh, that is my animal that I identify with the most. It's nature's nonconformist. He doesn't, the platypus doesn't fit into any other previously defined categories, he made his own rules. You know, they said, dude, what are you, man? You're a fucking, you're a mammal, but you, but you uh, lay eggs like that ain't right. You got, and he's got venomous claws and fucking duck beak and a beaver fucking body. And um, he, he just does his own thing. And they had to, they, they were like, you, you you, you don't exist. You, you're a paradox. You don't fucking fit into our categories. And you know what he said? He said, hey, I'm just being myself. Yeah. It's your systems that must be flawed. So I love the platypus. And I did have a platypus on my back. Whoa, look at those fucking hey, Rob, shredded fucking Jeez. Arm, arm thingies. It is Robbie uh, the Barber Beefcake right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gimmick change, it's happening. <laughs> What's that? I said gimmick change, it's happening. <laughs> uh, okay, so I did want to ask you too in regards to Halloween, especially a horror movie. Would you like to play the killer in a horror movie, the hero in a horror movie, or would you like to die horrifically in a horror movie if you're to be cast in one? Um, I would like to be the hero. You know, yeah. I've had a couple. I've had a couple scripts come my way for movies where. 
if they were made, I would have been the hero. Um, I was a bit of a hero in that shark movie, and I really liked it. I was a hero in uh, Wrong Side of Town. Yeah. Uh, but but there's been some where I'm shooting. Oh, I just might have done one that, that was a secret project where we're shooting zombies. I guess that's the fucking Mac Daddy of horror movies now that I think about it. Yeah. Um, but not talking about that one right now. But also, I've had scripts, though, for shooting uh, where I'm, where I'm a, a guy with a gun, shooting vampires and or zombies and shit like that. And so um, every time I, when I read one of those that can relate to it, I like that part, you know, like the, I'm not going to fucking uh, change the world or anything with my, um, performance on it, but I like you know the fucking Bruce Willis and Die Hard kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, and like no, you could totally pull off the like a, a Roddy Piper esque They Live kind of character that's like iconic and definitely good shit. Man. Hey, I got something uh, that also that I saw. It's not a horror movie, but just something to talk about real quick. Yeah, um, on Netflix, there's a, a series called Painkiller. Painkillers. Okay. All right. Ooh, okay. I highly recommend it. I enjoyed the fuck out of it. We kind of binge watched it. It's six episodes and it is the history of OxyContin. Ooh, okay. Yeah. And it's not a documentary. It's a docudrama. So it's acted out. Matthew Broderick plays the, 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 the main guy, the Mr. Strattler that owns inherits um, Purdue pharmacy. And they have this pill, a heroin pill um, and he decides to fucking repackage it um, and make it friendlier. And they named it OxyContin. And it goes through the history of them getting that out there. And, man, I, it, I'm realizing it, it changed my views because um, obviously I've had at least as many people close to me die of uh, overdoses from uh, narcotics. Um opioids and i always think you know that we have choices and that the you know i i i put the blame on the the abuser yeah sure that, that's just how i've always felt every every circumstance is different whatever if you're lied to boom guess what that's a, a whole other factor but when it comes to any of my friends that uh take a massive amount of pills night after night after night and then one night it just mixes funny with the alcohol and fucking tons of shit they took and then it kills them. Um, you know, I, I always think like, how, how far can you go before you find the blame? It's in the, it's in the abuser and I, and not the drug itself. You know, we certainly wouldn't ban beer just because a lot of people abuse it, but with pills, they, they, they now it's hard as fuck to get it and it can help a lot of people. And it's very hard to get narcotics because the doctors are cracked down on so hard. They're afraid to prescribe it. So I've always felt that's been my position always is that like the abusers, they're abusing it. They're abusing the system. You know, that's where the, where the flaw is. And, and I don't blame the drug itself um, or the pharmaceuticals or whatever. This gives me a little bit different um, spin on it mm -hmm. because, because uh, so they name it. So now they name it um, OxyContin, which I remember when that came out and they make, well, first off, there's no limit. It seems like on how strong they could make it. They could wow. make it. They can make it like worth like 15, 10 milligram um, oxycodones, which is just incredible in one pill. But anyway, I don't even know exactly what the number is, maybe more, but 130 milligram. Wow. Because people don't take that in consideration, the, the, the strength. They'll say like, he ate four pills. Well, was it a five milligram it pill was. <laughs> or a 130 milligram pill? Because they're, those are way, way different. You're right. Who thinks about that? I don't know why, but people just don't. Um, anyway, in the movie, you get to see the pharmaceuticals branding this pill, and, uh, and you get a different take because they wanted to make it seem friendlier. Uh, they they get the uh, FDA to say that it's safer than the other ones based on its speed of rate of metabolism in your body bypassing a certain point, and it was. It was really, really shady, but they get all these hot girls to push the drug 
to the doctor's offices to, to prescribe more because they're getting rich off of it and everyone's getting rich off it. And, um, and you know, they, they said before that they were prescribing the heroin to a nine or 10 on a, on a pain scale. And they said, you know, everyone could benefit from this. What about people that have three or four, they have a lot of pain too. If it's a three or four on a scale of one to 10, you know, this could help them. Boom. So they, it, when you look at it and they tried to make it like friendlier and tried to get it out there, it, all of a sudden, you know, it's like, wow, I guess now I could see, you know, I mean, deception is one thing. And mm -hmm. that's what, that's what, I mean, not to ruin anything, but I mean, that's what they're looking at is misbranding and mislabeling at the end, which if they do that and put non-truth out there, and if you can prove that they knew it was more dangerous and they hid information, then you're talking about you know, legal technicalities that, that could really make someone culpable of, uh, of some, some criminality. But otherwise, I always think, you know, like in a free society, you know, we should have the options to, uh, to, to get um, what we need slash want, uh, at least to an extent and, and an extent that we might not all agree upon. But um, it's called Painkillers and uh, it's really good. Okay, I'm going to check it out. Uh, yeah, and you know, people I didn't mention, but of course, people are dropping dead left and right during the movie, overdosing yeah. on it, partying on it, sniffing it. It doesn't say to do that on the label, you know. Right, you just you're doing That's taking like, your own liberties. It starts out as a twelve hour pill that you can take uh, just twice a day, um, and then you know, people are taking handfuls and snorting it. And uh, but um, anyway, uh, boom! And I got to watch Getting Gotti. I didn't know about that till. Oh. Uh, that's, so that, is that a documentary or that uh it's a three-part series it's made by the same people that made uh fear city which was really good yeah oh fear city called, I saw like, most of that yeah, yeah. it's good mm -hmm. where yeah, that was in new york where they busted all the new york mobs was that yeah. yeah that's a good one that's a real good one did you ever see the movie thank you for smoking too with uh aaron mm -hmm. eckhart yeah yeah long yeah. time ago that was a really good one too where they like yeah i love that yeah i love that all the deception about yeah cigarette smoking and all that stuff i thought was pretty cool yeah i mean it, it might be one-sided but at least it's you know non-fiction enough to where i feel like we're learning some of the history right know. yeah you're you know, some probably do an opposite take on a lot of the stuff but uh you know we weren't there so at least uh we can hear about it right right exactly <laughs> well cool let's see what we got here coming up next yeah okay um yeah, just back to AW. Uh, did you get to do anything outside in the city? I know you were probably just mostly there and then out, really, basically, huh? Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned before, we went to Luke Hawk's wedding. And Correct. so yes. that, oh, yeah. That was, yeah, so that was Monday. So then I had to fly back home Tuesday and then fly out Tuesday and uh, to Philly, and then I just slept and got uh, got a lot of rest. And then Wednesday was the show, and then uh, boom, back uh, back home on Thursday. Back on Thursday. Um, did you get to run into uh, Jeff Jarrett, Karen, and Cody? Not Cody, but I saw Jeff, and uh, and it was cool because it was Cody's birthday, and yep. uh, you know, so he showed me some. Uh, Someone showed me some pictures of, uh, of of him celebrating and stuff. He's 17 years old. I didn't Isn't know that. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That. It's, it's a, and Katie always says this too. It's so awesome that he's such a big wrestling fan. And like, as, as Katie put it, all three of his parents are wrestlers. <laughs> right. How crazy is that? <laughs> <laughs> Not that Karen is, but she's a wrestling personality, you know, and it's just, um, it is it is cool that he's like so into it uh, when he's that close to it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. He's a, he's a great kid. Too. It's uh, yeah. Anytime you see him, it's cool. Happy birthday, Cody. Uh, today too. Yeah. As we yeah. Today too, as we uh, record uh, a couple of days ago too, Jeff Jarrett is celebrating, I think it's six years of sobriety. So he posted that on Instagram. Today. Oh, nice. I didn't know that. Congratulations, Jeff. Yeah. So pretty, pretty cool there. Pretty big week for yeah. the Jarrett's. So awesome. Um, I'll follow up. So you ran into Ric Flair um did you guys exchange words and so you were caught off guard that he was there huh you, yeah i just said dude what are you doing here and he's hey i'm going to work man and we just laughed and uh i said ah, do they know you're here the crowd and he said no he's surprised and he's coming out the next segment and i was like awesome man that's fucking cool i love i love philly and that's so awesome that we're giving them like such an awesome show with 
big things like that. And I watched behind the curtain uh, until I could see the Phillies reaction to Ric Flair coming out. Cause I just thought that was a really cool, unexpected moment. Oh yeah, it definitely was. And like to see him go out there with Sting and Philadelphia is a big, like kind of like Flair country area too. Like a lot of Philly people love Flair. So it was very neat aspect that I did not expect seeing it too. So pretty, pretty awesome. Uh, did yeah. you get to interact with Sting too? See him just hi, 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 you know, what up? Put my fingers in his eyes. <laughs> Good luck tonight. Happy retirement. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I made a list so I didn't forget anybody. Christian, did you run into him? Yes. Yes, I did. All right. Same thing. Yep. Poked him in the eyes. He cut a hell of a heel promo on Flair, too, by the way. That was fucking holy shit. That was like, I don't know if you saw any of it, but it was, he was uh, doing some quality work. <laughs> Doing awesome. some good work there. How about Adam Copeland Edge to see him? Yeah, I did. I did. Gave him. A, we had a big. We had a big hug. Nice. We had a big hug. I don't know why, but when I always remember, like one time, after I had, I don't know why we hadn't seen each other in a while or whatever. But I, I was at a show where Edge was at. Must have been WWE, like way back in the day, like 2005 or six or whatever. It was a long time ago. But anyway, I just remember, like, uh, like, like one time, like uh, we hugged each other, and it was like, it was just like a really deep, uh, like we both got each other in, like, like really deep mm-hmm. in there, and it was just like a really like um, tight embrace, and it was a little extra long, and then we both, you know, when we let go, we just looked at each other, and I was like. That was a great hug. <laughs> and uh, ever since then, I always think about that every time I see him. I always think, like, hey, I'm going to try and give him a big hug again. Yeah, just to hold it as long as you can. <laughs> I used to be really awkward about that, but I think it had a lot to do with having a super insecure wife, too. Not that she would care about me hugging the dudes, but of course she would with the girls. And, you know, if I'm going to hug the dudes, I'm going to hug the girls. But Right, exactly. Because yeah, the boys. Voice- I don't know if I can always, if I can blame that all on her or not, or, or me just being weird, but, um, you know, overall, like, I don't even, I think even like, you know, hugging and kissing my parents, like, I think it feels like I had to be like way into my adulthood before I was even like comfortable doing that compared to a lot of other friendlier, touchier uh, people. Well, yeah, instinctively too. If you're like used to like, oh my god, what is the evil ex gonna say? It's all it, like it's. I know too from like being in past relationships. It's just like, oh my god, you're thinking about that shit. I automatically sometimes. <laughs> right, right, yeah. No, I know people. People, that's people's norm. They deal with it. I'm so glad I don't have to anymore. But um, mm-hmm. I see things on Instagram where like there was like a dude and his and his girl, and then like a really hot girl just sat beside him. And he didn't even do anything. She just sat beside him, you know, and and automatically the wife was like, ah, got all bitch and got up and walked off. And he's like chasing after her, like, honey. And she's like pushing him. <laughs> and all she can say is, um, I know you'd rather be with that, you know, and it's, I'm, oh my God, like, I can't believe that used to be like my norm because it just, it really just took away from life, life's quality, just my whole vibe, you know, and everyone knows and tells me that my vibe is so much different now. And so that's, that's, you know, obvious. And by the way, um, so I'm at Luke's wedding mm-hmm. and um, outside smoking, me and Katie catching a little buzz and Luke came out, you know, and he's, this was the night before at the party or whatever. And he's just saying, Hey, you know, I really appreciate everything. You know, you don't have to take the pictures with everyone. You know, you can run out, you can run if you want. I know everyone's probably bothering you. And I'm like, uh, uh, they they wanted a picture with me, right? That, that's cool. He said, oh, "Man, I, I know, but I appreciate." It. Katie said, um, "Katie said we understand that Rob doesn't ha- have the most." Um, and I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember exactly what she said. That she said doesn't have the most um, I- I- inviting inviting vibe to him. And Luke was like, "Oh, you think so?" And I was like. I was like almost offended, like, hey, like, what? <laughs> I'm like, here. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, what? And, and, and later on, I said to her, I said, you know, when you when you said that uh, to Luke, whatever you said, I, I just want to make sure I translated that right. You, you were saying that uh, I don't, I don't know, I think you said that I don't give off like a, like a welcoming kind of vibe or something. And, and she said, you, she said, you just seem like you're content by yourself and that you're not interested in small talk or mingling. And then I was like, oh, 
well, that is how I feel. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> now all of a sudden I wasn't offended. And I was like, well, that's cool. I guess, I guess I give my the proper vibe off. Cause I mean, that is true. I mean, if someone talks to me, then of course, you know, I pick up the energy like, Hey, of course we can do a picture. But, but yeah, I mean, I'm the worst at mingling. I don't want to do that. And, and I realize that is a lot of what a wedding uh, party is. Uh, the, 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 the two families getting together, friends, and they want everyone to mingle so that everyone becomes one big group. And I get it. They want that. But, you know, you're sitting at the table and then just randomly, like, a couple strangers next to you are like, so where are you guys from? You know, and then it's just yeah. like, oh, um, oh no. Please, no, I mean, it's you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mentioned this one time on one of my YouTube videos talking about I, I didn't explain it like I just did. I just mentioned something about someone talking to me if I'm alone at a bar and it's saying I probably don't want to talk to them anyway. And somebody put up the time code on there, you know, look what he said here, and he said, uh, How do she? And I thought, Okay. <laughs> I guess. I mean, I'm okay with that. If that's, if that's what it is, you know, it's like, I, 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 I'm, I am content by myself. I don't want to mingle and uh, I don't want to talk about myself and I really don't need to know anything about this person. Uh, you know, so uh, that's happened a couple of times where, um, where I was like, Hey, what do you mean by that? And then I was like, okay, yeah, that is how I feel. You know what you're dead. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Continuing with the list, did you get to see Big Show, Paul White? No. No, okay. Um, I never brought him up. Uh, this is an interesting one. Did you ever interact with the MJF? Just, uh, boop, hello. Okay, boop, little that. Uh, yeah, just shook his hand, hello, a couple times. Yeah, he's cool. I don't know him. I like his vibe. Saw Mark Henry, talked to him for oh, nice. a while. Had fun uh, talking around with him. Mark's great. Great. Now, how about uh, the Young Bucks? Did you run in the Young Bucks? Yeah, but same thing. Mostly just saying hello. Mostly all that stuff. Okay. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, your first time that when you were at AEW, uh, Sammy Guevara came up to you. Did any other like young talent uh, or guys or gals have the the guts to approach you or anything like that and introduce? You? I don't think so. And actually, like take a picture. Like um, one guy did the other night on Wednesday. Uh, but I don't think he was a wrestler, but he was backstage. So I was kind of twisted about it because being, you know, the nice guy that I am, you know, my, my first thought is like, uh, you know, sure. You know, and then I'm thinking like, but we're in the back. If this guy's a building guy or something like, you know, it's not, I don't want to start a precedent because it's not cool for someone backstage. At least it didn't used to be. I don't know. I don't know if anyone cares, but you know, while people are back there doing business, you don't want, uh, you don't want to have to be like taking pictures and smiling and shit, but whatever, you know what I mean? It used to be policy as I think you can imagine, or anybody can imagine no different, uh, in any other kind of show, but, um, it's quicker to just fucking take the picture than to even say no. Yeah, so yeah, it's like, yeah. sure, psh, don't know who he was, but no, uh, everyone's really cool, but I, I don't think anyone has gone, gone, as far as asking me for uh for not that i can remember anyway for a photo i don't think so did any um you're probably mostly focused on your match and stuff did you get to catch anything besides flair anything like that that stood out to you while you're there um a little bit of, i saw a little bit of the hardy boys and young bucks uh six man match oh okay yeah and that was a lot of fun they did a really good job of that one so good dynamic <laughs> fun to see jeff and matt in there always so yeah I, I saw them a bunch over the saw them at the hotel um on the way in and uh, on the way out and ran into them a bunch of times so that's always cool i like the hardy boys yeah oh they're great they're great dudes yeah. uh tony Khan, did you get to say hi and interact with him um absolutely good he gave you good feedback on a match everything like that yeah yep yeah. yeah of course he was he was very happy with it um and uh right after the match you know he was like rob you did great and i was like oh thanks and uh he, he had to like push me away and i was like oh i'm trying to get you all sweaty like, no, <laughs> no no but that's fine you did great you did great and, um like come on bring it in bring it in <laughs> I, think I, a, I think i got a hug earlier though i don't know yeah he didn't hug me first when i met him but i might have been sweaty then too <laughs> i remember i was like 
story just because like that day or something i had seen a video about or someone saying that he you know that he hugs a lot and uh he told me that someone broke his rib hugging him him one time really yeah he had wow. a conversation he told me that yeah broken ribs and bruised ribs both hurt so bad <laughs> I, I, I think, yeah I, I mean that's one of the top pains that i've been through and uh i'd have to think about maybe my top three or so but that would be up there because it hurts just to fucking breathe you know just to and then every position hurts you got to try to take your weight off of your rib cage which is basically the frame of your body yeah. so it's yeah uh last time i broke my rib in the match in qatar and uh yeah i had to I just I was I just stayed in bed the whole next day. I was supposed to go to some horse races with the royal family and okay. some shit. And I was just I couldn't even talk, you know. I was just like, I'm not gonna make it. It hurt so bad just to talk, and it was just like so much pain. I just talked about this to you, didn't I? No, you broke it. No, no. Uh-uh. Okay, I, I was talking to tell someone about it. I anyway um, on the plane ride the whole way home. Um, because I was breathing so loudly and it didn't sound good, the flight attendants, at least three different ones, came by and they would say, sir, are you okay? And each time I would say, no. I'm fucking hurt. And then they wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> they would be lost. They wouldn't know what to do. And if they said, is there anything I can do? I'd say, uh you know, give me some alcohol. I can't remember what I was drinking, but, um, you know, sometimes that's the answer when it's really bad for me is to fucking, uh, uh, drug myself through it. And, uh, what was I drinking? I don't think I was drinking champagne yet. That's been my drink for the last several months, but that's now when I, went to, go to. <laughs> yeah, when I went to Qatar, uh, who knows anyway, um, ouch, but oh, boom. You needed Jerry Lynn to feed you cereal that time. Right. Mm -hmm. It takes so long to heal, too, uh, but it depends on on your lifestyle because when you're wrestling every night, sometimes it'll never heal. And what could take six to eight weeks will take fucking, you know, months because you're really hurting yourself every night. So that's one of the fun things about doing this as a full-time career changing the standards up yeah. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Doc, doctor would be like what that didn't heal yet and like oh it's trying i just re-break it every fucking night so it's kind of happens <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll, I'll get some time off coming up sure yeah yeah <laughs> all right i gotta ask too so there's the doors open for AEW still everything's there's there's still the engagement there going on <laughs> <laughs> Of course, of course. Uh, Everyone's uh, super cool there. And uh, now that I got a little bit of a uh, situation as far as teaming up with Hook, I feel like there's more reason than ever to to have me there. So I feel uh, good about that, you know, as opposed to I don't expect to ever hear from them again. There you go. How about that? How about that? Any tag team name ideas for you and Hook? I, I man, I almost wish I'd looked this up to give the the guy credit. Mm-hmm. I'm stealing it, and it's so good. I would actually probably want to use it. Yeah. And, uh, and anyway, so I had people on social media threw out some ideas and stuff, and the one that I fucking loved. And that stuck with me. You ready for it? I'm ready. Let's hear it. Tag, tag team name. R V D and Hook. Ready? <laughs> Smoke and choke. Oh yes. <laughs> that's great. Smoke and choke. Smoke and choke. Oh, that's perfect. Heck yeah. I like it, Rob. Thanks, random anonymous suggestion. <laughs> where, where, where? Maybe I'll try to find them and give them credit or something. Cool. I'll try to find it. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Smoke and choke. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Something else in the world of wrestling that occurred, Rob. I don't know if you saw it, but TNA Wrestling is coming back. They're rebranding. Uh, at the, at the oh. Yes. At the beginning of January uh, for their hard-to-kill pay-per-view, 
They will no longer be Impact. They will be TNA Wrestling again. So, uh, yes. Do you think that's probably an g- impact? We've talked about it. We talk- It was kind of wild because we did talk about it last week, too, and how they always kept coming back and stuff like that. I think the TNA Wrestling, the brand, is a good way to kind of move forward with something like that. Uh, with, with, with what? With, with wrestling and, like, for their identity to co- go back to the TNA brand. Is that probably a good... Do you think that's a pretty good marketing move in certain ways? I don't know what went into their decision to to do it. You know, I don't have that information. And without that insight, you know, it could have been a good or bad uh, business decision. They could have moved properties, intellectual properties. They could have moved from one LLC to another for who knows what reason, maybe they got new investors. I have no idea, but just based on that question, uh, going back to TNA wrestling from impact wrestling, uh, this is just my opinion. I'm not trying to talk shit on anybody, but I don't see that as making that big of a difference. Mm Mm-hmm. I think too, and I, you know what Jeff said something to this effect. Now I'm paraphrasing because I didn't actually hear the podcast, but Jeff Jared on his podcast said it's really going to depend on what they, how they execute it all. Like, it's going to be the follow up with it. If they do stuff that is refreshing, uh, and kind of maybe repackages it in certain ways, but it's going to be the execution of how you move forward with the brand to make it stand out. Well, to me, it doesn't sound like earth shattering news. I think that people call impact wrestling TNA anyway, in conversation, I think it's almost, uh, you know, replaceable as far as like, uh, uh, interchangeable in certain ways. Yeah, that's a good, yeah. Thank you. That's a good one. And yeah, I mean, that's enough said. I I, I just don't think on that basis alone, I don't think that just by changing the name to TNA wrestling, that that alone is going to, add a lot of value or any value in my opinion being an outsider um to the company on its own i don't see it adding value to it but if it's along with uh other plan which i'm sure it probably is then they probably got you know some uh potentially good ideas and uh more power to them yeah yeah i'm looking forward to kind of seeing it i know from a fan perspective, like TNA, I was always like, oh my God, why don't they change the fucking name? Because it's like, you know, what does TNA even mean? Well, nonstop action, that's ridiculous. You know, I'm just trying to think like, you come up with a better name. And then they do change it. But then the certain nostalgic aspect of me is like, oh, I kind of liked the TNA era of certain aspects of things. And so there's that little bit of that, but you kind of need to make more of it too moving forward. I'm well, I'll, go, I'll go a little bit further. Like, I don't know if, if, if anyone has uh, studied the numbers to tell me if I'm wrong about this. But as far as I've known the company, I, I, I didn't, I don't think, I'm not under the understanding that they've grown much mm-hmm. or or that they really care to or need to. Um, I started there in 2010 and, and had a three year deal. Um, whole time I was there, it seemed like after the first few weeks, the, there was, they were always rumored to be going out of business, you know, and so that's somebody would call me. I just want to warn you, you know, like they're, they're definitely not going to be around by next week, you know, from what I'm reading. And, and, and they just kept on going, kept on plugging along. Um, I used to talk to uh, Mike Weber, the uh, mm-hmm. producer about, right. We talk about ideas and things and then they would go nowhere. And I decided that they really didn't care because, the house shows all seem to get the same, like 900-ish people. And they didn't seem to really put anything more into it. And sometimes, and we all have these stories where I went to a gym across the street from the arena and they're like, RVD, what are you doing here? And that was when we started going on the road. Yeah. And I was like, you don't even know? Like, we're right across at the Civic Center and... They didn't even bring a poster by or what? Anyway, there was a lot of reasons uh, that I put together to tell me way back in the day uh, that I 
am under the understanding that somehow they're content with what they're doing and they don't need to definitely don't need to try to compete with the with the bigger groups and i don't think maybe that they even need to 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 grow um i used to think back in the day because of rumors that i heard that maybe dixie's uh, dad was uh fun funding it i don't know maybe it was a write-off for the big oil company or some shit there was all those different things that were said to me there was some of the characters in the office i was told were there um strictly for espionage to keep it from growing and to keep it just at the same uh some level some specific guys that were running it at that time and uh and i thought hey that seems as, as possible as anything else at the time but now that it's this much later and i've already done like a whole nother run with them in 2019 and 20 or 2021 20 whatever it was yeah uh, i have no reason to think anything different mm -hmm. yeah um i will say i used to cover it for wrestlezone on a consistent basis uh, every week and the product overall is pretty solid i think that you know they have good storylines good continuities so it, it keeps up with it every week but then um you know i think the issue is you just see the significant difference in like you know what the venues are in comparison to you know what you'll see on WWE or now AEW and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, it's a matter of just rebranding and making it mean something. I think moving forward, um, Scott mm -hmm. Moore as, as a booker and stuff, like that, how do you think of him overall, uh, your experience with Scott and everything? Um, man, I've known Scott so long. I wrestled him, uh, one time in, uh, I think it was in Indianapolis, like way back, like, I don't even know if it was ECW or before ECW. It was oh, like, really? yeah, yeah. Rip Rogers and Sabu were both had the, the, they both were booking for this company and the locker room was literally split down the middle with like towels hanging from the ceiling or something. And Rip had his guys and Sabu had his guys. And they were both helping the guy from Louisville, Kentucky, uh, Mike Samples, it seems like. Hmm. Uh, anyway, that was so long ago. Um, Scott, um, I don't know. I mean, you know, he's, he's, when good to me i don't know him enough to know if he uh what, what what to tribute towards him as far as like what's done on the show i don't know like what what what's his ideas from that you know mm -hmm. uh the only talk i remember having with him really was when uh when they hired me for the last run you know he he was telling me what they're looking for and 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 uh, and even at the time you know like my back was bothering me and stuff and it was like no nah, we want you to be like the sting you know where we have like the big name and then uh this and that and then even when they turned me heel they were saying you know not to i don't have to do all the moves and stuff now that i'm a heel i don't have to you know go as extreme and shit but i didn't really know how to how to change that up but yeah. um outside of that though i don't know how he felt ever about anything you know like didn't talk to me about when they let me go every time at the end of the show i never had last time i never had like a long deal it was always per show so at the end i would always think i was saying bye for good because yeah. i never felt like they were making their money off of me whatever they were doing with me i always felt like well i know what they're paying me it don't seem like they're building the show around me you know especially yeah. they got me putting over some of these young guys and, and like, what, like, I don't, what am I doing here? And, and I'd be like, well, all right, Scott, you know, thanks. And he'd be like, all right, see you next month. And I'd be like, really? <laughs> oh, okay, cool. You know, all right. <laughs> put it on the schedule. And it, it was like that. And then, you know, one time then it was like, all right, yeah, you know, we're, we're good. And then like, I have no idea how anybody felt about that, you know, just, me and Katie were like, all right, you know, like uh, uh, they just started doing something, gave me and Katie our own talk show or uh, whatever. And then boom. And then they were like, yeah, uh, writers don't really have anything else for you. And uh, like, all right, that's that's cool. I'm surprised, you know, you guys were this far. But uh, <laughs> that's the closest I've been, though, to being let go like anywhere, because everything else has been me walking out. Yeah, so, just being, being done and stuff. Yeah, either being done. Yeah, or me quitting if not finishing uh, the time thing. Everything I can think of. But anyway, um, 
but of course I was fine with it. And I was like, you know, and Dilo was like, uh, Hey, uh, Rob, you know, he goes, this is what he said. He goes, Rob, um, you know, uh, call me, call me, call me. That's what he said. Yeah. I didn't call it. Didn't call it. Well, there we go. <laughs> so what's, there to talk, what's there to talk about? I'm done. You know, yeah, was, right. <laughs> but, um, you know, when I see Scott, you know, he's someone to say, Hey, what up? Boop him you in know. the eyes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, he's a funny dude, man. I met him, uh, backstage at one of the, uh, ad free show events and, uh, he was sharing some stories and cracking everybody. He, he's pretty good at impressions too, from what I remember. Um, but yeah, and also he was back behind the scenes at Ric Flair's last match. He's, he's a cool dude. I like him. And um, I do all like when I get to check out impact, I do like it. And uh, Alex Shelley's the world champ right now. So that's pretty cool. And uh, cool. he's having a pretty good run. So it's neat stuff. From the machine gun motor machine gun. Yep. Machine gun, motor city, motor city Mo- machine. Gun. There you go. Motor city machine gun. Alex, Alex is the world champ, and then Chris Saban's the next division champion. So it's kind of neat. And the fact that they're going back to TNA, it's yeah. kind of serendipitous for that. So kind of cool. Yeah, they've been, they paid a lot of dudes there. They worked yeah. their ass out there for a long time. So very cool. Um, very, very cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What was I going to say? Something else about Scott? Um. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever I was gonna say. Period. There you go. <laughs> I don't remember. It's well, gone. Yeah. As my mom would say, it must not have been important. Must not have been that important then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he's he's got Tommy Dreamer back too, and so we and you know what he's capable of, so that that certainly helps. I'm sure a lot of uh, what his mindset or philosophy is is executed on television and stuff plus bubba's back there too he's he's in the thick of oh, yeah. and everything yeah so yeah. Uh, it's, it seems like point in the right direction i'm i'm intrigued to see how it goes once uh the year turns so to speak oh that's what i was gonna say about scott um mm-hmm. one thing i'll say about him is i do believe that he loves the business you know mm-hmm. oh yeah i read the shows about him like from everything he's done and how long he's done it and uh you know there's there's no question about that. So that's that's a compliment uh, behind closed doors. <laughs> you know, for us, for us, we usually take it as a compliment. If someone in the business says that about someone else, that, you know, hey, I know this person really loves the business, then it's like, it's saying something, you know, that that person's heart is in the right place. And, uh, you know, as opposed to other people that are just in it for, for themselves and don't care if they're killing the business, if they can make a dollar. Yeah, they have a well-being thought over all of the business for it. Yeah. Yeah, sweet, man. Um, Cool. Well, uh, I want to see how long this takes us. And depending on how it does, um, we'll either wrap it up or I'll I'll do some, a couple of Ask RVDs. But this is what I wanted to bring up. I thought this was really interesting. I actually wrote about this today on scoops.com. So, John, Mo- I mean, you did the Headstrong documentary. And uh, John Moxley of AEW happened to have a concussion probably about, I want to say, a little over a month ago. And it was a mild one. But uh, he spoke with the the news website. It might be a paper. I don't know. But the messenger. A paper? Might be a, might be a newspaper. Paper? I, I always ask that when someone says, uh, I don't know. It's <laughs> I, I humor myself when I say that. I don't know if it's that. I always ask right away. And that's one of those jokes people don't get. And they think I'm weird. I appreciate it. But uh, so, but John Moxley, he's got a new vision for concussion protocol in pro wrestling. Uh, and I wanted to get your take on this, Rob. So oh. he was talking, he was talking about uh, a- in an exclusive interview with the messenger, Moxley opened up about his incident of getting concussed. He said, I just kept getting progressive. This was during the match. He was like, I just kept getting progressively more lost and couldn't figure out where the fuck I was. Then I had this moment of clarity, like, oh, fuck, I'm fucked up. I got to get the fuck out of here. And so then uh, his suggestion almost is like he thinks that there should be almost like an independent party at ringside. Like a lot of times what, what doctors, what uh, other sports do, like football, they have an independent doctor check for concussions and stuff like that. But this is his take, and I wanted your thoughts. 
maybe a really experienced, maybe a really experienced wrestler and a really experienced doctor who are trained to see signs of that shit are watching on a separate feed. So maybe even behind the scenes at a monitor or something, even if they have a doctor close to ringside, what if the guy fucking spills outside the ring? He doesn't see that. The doctor and the wrestler are completely untethered to the creative portion of it. He said they have no idea nor any interest in what the story is, who wins, who loses, or how long it's supposed to go. And then Moxley also says, having a wrestler at ringside could tell the independent doctor what could be a wrestling thing and what could be legitimate. And so then he says, as soon as the doctor sees a sign of something, someone being concussed, he just hits the effing red button. Moxley said, boom, this is over. No matter how much time is left, no matter how much, if, if it's on live TV, it's just over. You figure it out from there. What do you think of that kind of, Rob? Having an independent party almost looking at it. Where would you, your experience and your knowledge and doing the documentary and everything like that, what, what's your take on that? Hmm. Um, I, I'm not against it. Um, you know, I, I really don't know if it's that necessary. I don't know if concussions are happening that often now. And I know that... Um, the chair shots to the head and certain extreme styles have been tailored to be uh, a little safer for the long term. And uh, because of that, I don't know if there's statistics to back up the necessity of something like this. I, um, you know, I, I also, I, you know, outside of the doctor, maybe being under WWE umbrella. I don't know that the situation was that much different when I did my return to WWE in Philadelphia, 2014. Yeah. 13. I guess it was 13. I think it was 13. So um, they, 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 told me before the show some things have changed now you can't bleed if you get busted open during the match they stop the match or you get out of there you know you stop the match they might continue and you just roll the fuck out the referee or not the ref the doctor legit doctor who they didn't used to have before there yeah will check you out if he can get you to stop bleeding you're back in if you can't get it to stop then you're done with the match and i was like wow that's that's different, you know, for our business. I went out there, boom, I think it was Seamus, hit me with the ladder, busted me open. They were like, boom, go see the doctor. I was like, no, you know, this is my big fucking return, you know, like, yeah. they've been, they've been, and that was like, they, they built that return so huge with all the trailers weeks before, you know, like, like the whole damn show was coming back. And I knew I was going to give them exactly what they, uh, we're advertising and, and shit, you know, um, and and then I when the doctor was like messing with the, you know, trying to see if you get it to stop and shit, and I was just like, oh my god, what if they pull me from the match and I'm done right now? Like I, I'm not down with this new new style of wrestling. But uh, he said, yeah, you're okay or whatever. I rolled back in the ring and I continued. So um, doesn't sound that much different, although that doctor has been accused by some of um, being biased towards the uh, company's uh, agenda, which don't know, I'm not saying that's true, but outside of that, it doesn't sound that different, but that's my thoughts on it, dude. I don't know, you know, that it's that different. Uh, I don't know that it's, that it's necessary. I don't know how often these concussions are happening. I think if you're doing death matches and you're hitting each other with, the set of stairs with barbed wire wrapped around it and uh, and, and, and light bulbs, uh, then, you know, maybe you got a better chance of getting a concussion. Maybe, maybe for those matches, uh, especially, you might want to have somebody like that around. So you're saying overall, like it, from the wrestling perspective, even the wild kind of moves that they're constantly doing and it's going so fast paced, a lot more fast paced and everything. And, uh, there, not a whole lot of head trauma can necessarily happens, even though it might look that way to the to the layman's eye. Like nowadays, like I say, they would have to do a test and uh, and get some statistics on that. You know, um, did I get a concussion when I wrestled the other night on AEW? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
do I think the guys that I wrestled got a concussion? No, I, I'm sure of it. Do I think uh, Hook got one? No. So there's four guys right there that all of us can say no, just like on a normal night, we didn't get it, you know? So it's not something that that, that is just part of a normal night anymore. It's something that's more of an emergency kind of thing, like a freakish accident uh, that, that, that can happen as a cause of what we're doing out there. And the chances of that happening are increased or decreased depending on what the fuck we're doing in the ring. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know you're pretty right too, I think for the most part. It doesn't seem like concussions happen too often uh, from what I hear. Uh, the one that really stands out significantly is like um, Adam Hangman Page got one on a bad DDT, I think from Moxley once. And then uh, Adam Cole got hurt real bad from a concussion. And, uh, it probably happens more than is reported, you know. Mm -hmm. Like uh, when I went with my numbers, you know, in the movie Headstrong, you know, I said I've had a couple of hundred. Um, though that's self-diagnosed. I'm saying every time my bell got rung, you know, I've mm -hmm. only had I think two diagnosed actually. But for me, getting my bell rung, having my senses off to where things are spinning or slow motion or whatever. That shit probably happens more than is reported. Although it's reported now a lot more than it's not because that was an old school thing. And yeah. back in the day, back in the day, it was part of the job getting concussed. Sometimes like I, I've said this a lot, but if I wrestled balls Mahoney, I would plan on it. I'd plan on getting my bell rung during the match by that chair shot. And, and, that was cool to me. Like I wanted everyone way up in the top of the 400 people arena bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted them to uh, hear that chair shot and to know that, you know, we weren't out there playing and, 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 you know, I was, that was all, that was all for, for the protection of the business and for the expression of the business. And I wanted everyone in the crowd and other wrestlers to know that they wouldn't even be able to take that chair shot. That's, you know, that was what was behind the uh, passion for me it was like, lay it in there, motherfucker. Let me show how tough I am. Whack. And I would know I'm going to see uh, birds, you know, uh, twerping for a couple seconds back in the day. I don't think that's part of the deal anymore. Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's a little bit, at least more heavily monitored and stuff like that. And, you know, yeah, it's just, um, it's uh, people know that what happens, the repercussions. We didn't know. Mm -hmm, didn't yeah. know. Uh, fans, listeners, viewers, if you're if you're watching, here it is, right here, RVD Headstrong. I have it. I bought oh. it. I bought it a while back, even before we started the podcast. So uh, check it out. Good stuff. Um, right, uh, available on Amazon, I believe. Still too, right, Rob? I think it is, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon. Uh, Amazon Prime. It's got a goofy picture. I mean, I have no idea how to how to take it off. But if you go to Amazon Prime. And you look up headstrong, you'll see me going. What? Yeah. I asked Joe Clark, you know, my partner on this, like, hey, can you do something about that? Change that image? Like, how's that? How's that going to entice people to want to fucking rent the movie? <laughs> Trust that guy. Yeah, right yeah. I have no idea how to change it. If anybody knows, comment below. Comment below on the YouTube. Mm -hmm. That fucking like button. Hit that, yeah, hit the like button. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And hey, if you're listening too on iTunes or uh, Spotify, give us a good old rating. I've seen we got a couple of them. So keep those cooking. That definitely helps. We want to get those audio numbers cooking real good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Rob, we'll do a couple Ask RVDs and then we'll wrap it up. How's that sound? Swell. Okay, cool. I was going to do a spotlight, but I want to give this guy justice. It was appropriate for the halloween season but we're gonna wait we're gonna wait all right let's see which one do i want to start with here here we go let's try this one dread asked do you have the original ecw tv title that you held do you have the original tv title ron absolutely smurfly i do how about that pretty damn awesome yeah. still looks good uh it's beat up and i've thought about getting it like reconditioned and shiny but then that would take away from the hardcore history of it you know yeah i'll like uh maybe i'll bring it on next week on the uh, on the show i've i mean it's in my action figure room 
um, oh. on display. So I, I, I feel like I've shown it, but um, I was just talking to someone, my agent mm -hmm. that booked me. I already got like 11 or 12 shots next year already. Okay. Um, most signings, one or two matches, but um, until recently, I was like, ah, don't bother me. That's but now it's like, all right, it's coming up. And now I'm looking at my calendar and I'm like, I got to check and see if I'm available on that date. But uh, one of them that I got booked uh, today in New York City in Queens, there's this comic store that we go to. Uh, I've been there a few times. The what's it called? Um, we'll talk about it when the time is up, but he's having ECW day. Ooh. And my dude was like, why don't you bring that ECW belt? And I was like, yeah, I should bring it there for sure because other wrestlers will be there for different hour hours throughout the day, ECW guys. And and uh, that's probably the fans that we will uh, that we will aim for to draw their universe, wrestling universe, I think it's called. Or, oh, okay. Know, something like that. Huh. Nice. Wrestling, yeah. Anyway, that's – I don't even know when that is. I think that was – March? I don't know. But okay. well yeah, we'll get to we'll get to that when we get to that. Nice. Queens is a, I like Queens. I like Queens. I've only been there once, but I liked it. Um oh this is a good one. Joey Brazil, Mr. Joseph Anthony asks, You're such a good promo. Why didn't you fight for more, more promo time in WWE? You are a good promo, Rob. I think that's really underrated about you and um I think you're you've been able to show that you can cut a damn good promo. No pun intended. So maybe I'm too passive, at least for this business to be taken care of, but I hate fighting for what I think should be given to me. And mm -hmm. you know, I've told some stories about when I was in WWE. And then uh, I remember Bruce Pritchard telling me like, Hey, John Cena's going to be making this movie Marine coming up. And there's a, you know, there's a opening for you to, to be in, you know, like really, you know, get up there in that main event. I was like, all right, cool. You know, so I'm saying, you know, that's a good chance for you to, you know, like, you know, really capitalize. And I, and I was offended. I was like, what are you, are you, are you telling me I should try harder? I should work harder out there. And he was like, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm like, okay, because, like, I work my ass off, and the fans know it. And I was offended. And I was like, are you telling me I need to kiss ass? And and he was like, no, no you just, whatever you can do to, to, to allow that to happen. You know, there might be some things working against you you could take care of. And I felt like at the time, in a stubborn way, like, you know what, this is business. You You, you hired me. You pay me this much money per year. If you're going to make your money back out of me, it seems like you would place me accordingly on the shows, do the right thing with me. But it doesn't work that easy because part of your placement it depends on your passion and, and, and things like that, where the, there's all kinds of variables that aren't decided in advance. And, and so you do fight for it. I always hated that. Uh, I hated fighting for stage, um, stage space. Whenever all the boys come out at the top of the ramp and they're standing there, always, man, somebody, the producers would put me in front. And because all the boys are, are so much more hungry than me, before we even roll the camera, while we're just out there standing talking, people end up like not even noticing they're doing, I guess. Because some of them that I did call out were like, did I do that? But they, they end up working their way in front of me so that by the time that we're actually ready to shoot, I'm like back there, you know, like, like hey. Oh. And and I was a bigger star. And so they would try to put me in front of stars. They'd come by and pull me out again. Sure enough, because it takes another 10 minutes before we're ready to roll. Everyone's blah, 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 blah. They ended up pushing me back. And I would let it happen because I didn't have that fight in me. I kind of resented that I should have to fight, which overall... I'm definitely not saying that's the right thing to do, uh, not for my career, but maybe for my peace of mind. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good way to put it, too. Um, and, like, obviously you were over anyways. Do you think you would have benefited more if you had more promo time? Or 
I mean, overall, though, it's like you were good and, and you had a crowd reaction. You were still top star. So I and never they really, thought that they really understood me, you know, mm-hmm. and even with my promos, you know, for the most part, I didn't think that the writers understood me or the agents, except for Paul, you know. But like when they would write something, a suggested script, I always was offended by it because I always thought, even though I'm open to change and make it mine, just that they would put this as a blueprint. I remember thinking like, they think I'm an idiot, you know, like there was one thing with me and Seth Rollins where uh, uh, Seth says something about um i used to grow up wanting to be a like gear or whatever something uh and then they had my response was "Ooh, burn like, that's what they had written down there what? maybe maybe they just put that there for me to throw away and replace but i would take it differently i would take it with offense like they really want me to go out there and go "Ooh, burn like i'm not gonna look like the biggest asshole and and so anyway um for that and many other reasons but mostly reading suggested dialogue, especially for a long time, they thought I would only say dude or whatever or cool, yeah. the one word things. Um, I just always thought they don't get me, and I didn't know how to translate myself to them really any more, any better than I did anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, you know, and the, do, going in from a scripted to where it's like, you know, bullet points where the original, like a lot of it's, hey, go, you know, just say this, get this point across. And then going to scripts and wrestling is, uh, I don't know. It works for some, it works for Kurt Angle, but it's like, that's not everybody's bag either. Um, yeah, it would be, I mean, it would give you the idea of the conversation of the, the content and the body of it. And everyone was, they were always like pretty good at um, giving you freedom to, to go ahead and, and make it yours, you know, but I still, I still just wasn't into it for the most part. You know what I mean? Like imagine, I don't know, just imagine like you're, and this is just anywhere in the business. All right. But just imagine you're your own hometown. You got family there, all your friends from high school, everyone's there to see you. Right. Imagine uh, that you're wrestling Kurt Angle and, uh, and then they tell you that you got to, uh, you're going to be tapping out to the ankle lock in uh, in three minutes. Right. Yeah. Now imagine go do a promo and tell everyone to believe in you. Yeah. Convince them. There's no way that you're going to lose Cause you're going into this prepared. You're going in with the hometown spirit. You're doing this for fucking Poughkeepsie, New York, or wherever the fuck we are. And, 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 and imagine being, you know, okay, you're just an actor now go, you know what I mean? <laughs> you tell everyone you can believe in me guys. You know, I'm, I'm going to do this for all of us. And for you in the meantime, you're going, fuck this. Sucks. I should years. leave. I should leave. Why am I even here? <laughs> I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> Well, that's part of it too that people probably don't even think of and it's hard for me to really uh get into some of the some of the promo ideas it's hard for me to convince you that winning this intercontinental championship for the fourth time next sunday means more to me than anything else in the world yeah i mean that's a skill that you have to develop you know to be able to to sell tickets that's a big part of it but not my favorite part Mm -hmm. yeah if you gotta like kind of that's that's an aspect too it's like yeah how much uh because yeah it'd be it's cool to win it the first time and it's like hey this is a a road to something going on but if it's like okay you're just getting the belt we're giving you this for this run it's like okay how do i make this feel that important if it's not really or or whatever getting in the ring with this guy getting your hands on this guy because of what he's done to you because you feel so insulted by him or you you know whatever the deal is he robbed you last time and it's so important to you that you're going to get him in the ring the way you want him next week you know under your conditions and you can't fucking wait you're looking so forward to it and you know you got to be able to turn that on and turn it off and and uh, a lot of it's bullshit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Plain and simple. All right, here's an interesting one. Let's see. All right, Joey Fish. Some F in nine. By the way, by the way, a lot of that is what fans love doing. You know, that's their favorite part. They cut promos themselves, and then when they end up getting in the business, like say Mr. Kennedy, then boom, you can sound just like The Rock or uh, mixed with Stone Cold Steve Austin, and you've probably been doing that 
you know, uh, having fun as a wrestling fan for years, entertaining your college friends or whatever he did before, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, the translate, that's the thing too. It's like, and Ric Flair, like people love the Ric Flair promos. Like every fan or half the fan, half the boys probably uh, did Ric Flair promos in the mirror, you know, before they were ever in the business, you know, and I did it. Yeah. Hundred percent, you know, and you look at it too. It's like how many people copy off of one another back in the day, like from like Muhammad Ali took from Gorgeous George, and then everybody like Dusty and uh, other people took from Muhammad Ali, and it's just like people. Just Where do you draw the line between uh, inspiration and plagiarism? Right. Mm -hmm. How about that? Mm -hmm. All right. If you could have substituted another person to feel the wrath of the ECW fans in place of Cena at one night stand, who would you have wanted to see that get that type of heat? Is there somebody that stands out in that regard, Rob? Hmm. Somebody that maybe epitomized WWE at that point in time. Right. Um, well, I just for the hell of it, let's just say The Rock. If I was in there with The Rock and I had that crowd that much behind me, uh, you know, wanting all of us joined together as a conglomerate entity to beat The Rock that night for the hardcore spirit, then uh, that would be a pretty cool victory to hold, wouldn't it? A hundred percent it would. You know what? If you inserted him into that, I 100% believe that that crowd would have been the same or if not more energy, you know. That night. think so? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Even if he came back because the rock was gone it. for like that. So. He could get heat though when he wanted heat, huh? Oh, yeah. He could get heat too. Yep. <laughs> for sure. Um, all right. We'll do two more here. Let's see. Speaking of ECW, if you had to pick three or five wrestlers, not four though, Rob, Three or five from the current <laughs> era of wrestling. Who would you have felt could have lasted in the original ECW? I feel like someone like a John Moxley, who we just talked about, or Kevin Owens comes to mind. Anybody names that stand out, modern names that stand out to you that they're like, hey, they could have had a pretty decent uh, run in e the original ECW. Um, I'll go with those two. Let's make it easy. And then, oh, then I got to name one more. And then I answered his question. And you answered your question. <laughs> you made it. Okay. Um, also, what was it? Kevin Owens and Kevin uh, Owens John, Moxley. John Moxley. And uh, who who did John Moxley fight in the, did he just have a death match? Or? He had a he had a big match with somebody recently. I mean, he fought like Ray Phoenix recently. Oh my God. Death match? Been... Hmm, death, not a death match. He had somebody had, oh, you know what? Dave O'Brien and Ricky Starks had a death match recently. Those were the two. Well, that had death match. Either one of those guys definitely could have been big stars in ECW. For real, like the, the crowd. I could see either one of them for different reasons. Um, getting good good heat from the ACW crowd. Hey, Ricky Starks would be somebody they cuz like he's such a yeah. good looking guy, but you put him in that oh. element, that's pretty neat. Yeah. Yeah, and I can't remember really having anybody like that really. I mean, it, the closest thing I can kind of think of was we had that manager Jason Knight, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I remember him. Right, yeah, you know, not quite the same, but kind of a similar vibe as far as, you know, the he was the handsome, I don't know, like um, I could see how the crowd would take him as if uh, maybe his character in his mind thought he was Ricky Star. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, as I'd say. All right, one more. This is a weird one. I wanted to include this, though. So. Boom. Clarence Alexander Pryor, who's a regular on uh, RVD Twitter. He's like, what do you think of the Power Rangers after 30 years of the franchise? Rob, were you a Power Rangers watcher? Um. I never watched it regularly. I always appreciated what it was. And I met some of the Power Rangers doing autograph signings at conventions over the years. Um, outside of the Tokyo Dome Hotel, 
when you're looking out the window of the uh, elevator, because there's a big glass, tall ass elevator, and you look down, there's a little amusement park there mm-hmm. you can look at. And, um, and Sabu's wife, ex wife, Hitomi, his Japanese wife that he had, she used to be a Power Ranger at a live show in that um, Tokyo Dome uh, carnival. Wow, really? Yeah. Yeah, when she was younger. So that's a pretty cool little piece of trivia history. They had a live Power Ranger show. And I don't know which one she was. She has told me. But um, I always thought they were cool. I mean, you know, what's not to like about them? Because yeah. they're martial arts. They kick ass. And um, I, I I just wasn't a regular watcher. So I don't know the characters and stuff like that. They always Obviously, they always change. They were teenagers. So... I was a huge fan as a kid, like 1993. I was like seven years old. The Red Ranger, man, that was my guy. And they got rid of him. And so, and then I was upset, and then I was done watching it. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good show. It was. A, I liked it, and it's yeah. It stands. It stood the test of time because I think kids just they're the bright colors, martial arts, all that stuff. You throw it all in there. Yeah. Right? Live comic book stuff. Cool, Rob. Well, hey, uh, it is time. It is time to wrap it up. Our ideology. Oh, how about that? Last week we talked about good and bad. And Rob, to be honest, it took me a while. I'm like, how how is I apply? Am I applying this to my week and thinking about it? Last night uh, there was a Halloween parade that went on here. And, uh, Park it if you got it. Smoke it if you got it. Smoke it if you got it. And so choke I, and choke. Um, smoke yeah. and choke. <laughs> smoke and choke. That's right. Smoke and choke. But don't choke. But don't choke. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so there was a Halloween parade that was going on and I was going to go out there, but I was recording with the robot podcast. And by the time I got out, it was like nine o'clock. Anywho. So I go downtown and I was like, well, I'll see if it's still going on. It's not. It's the long uh, ghost town in Bloomfield, P- Pittsburgh area. So I go into this bar. Who do I see? But this absolutely hammered guy, like just plastered, doesn't know where he is, but he treats like I'm his best friend, like sees me immediately wants a hug. I give him a hug. I don't know who the hell he is. And then he was like, hey, man, you want a drink? And I was like, sure, I'll take one. And so I'm sitting there, and he's um, explaining his laments to me and all that stuff. And I'm like, you know, just near to Ben, basically, sitting there listening to him. And he he kept saying over and over, like, all his troubles that he was going through. And he kept saying, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm a good person. And I was like, sure, yeah, man. You know, you know, I don't know this guy from Sunday. He could be a good person, could not be a good person for all I know. But it definitely makes you think because, and it made me think about it too because, you know, everybody probably thinks they're a good person to an extent, you know, or and they're or justified in a certain way. You know what I mean? And you know, this guy, whether he was a good person or a bad person, I, you know, I would have my own judgment on that, but. Uh, what he conveys to me, he believes he's a good person. So is he good? Is he not? It definitely made me consider this. And I was like, wow, this could apply to tomorrow. I was thinking about when we were recording. So right. that's my good yeah. bad experience. Right. Yeah, well, that's true. Um, you know, I've had two people tell me, Rob, I'm not a very good person. Yeah. And I'll always remember that. Like that's etched in my brain. I remember thinking like, how can someone really think that about themselves what would it take in their memory like you know who do they fucking kill or whatever and uh, one of them is is a wrestler that we all know that i'm not going to name but when he, he told me that he's not a good person and i'm just like man you know i feel like i would pick up on that if the, if this guy wasn't a good person so whatever he did in his past that he's ashamed of um or is guilty of whatever um his vibe now doesn't reflect that and you know it's similar to like with mobsters um uh, every mobster now has like a youtube show there's so many and and so you get a lot of them that are that are talking most of them in fact i think everybody except for joey merlino has cooperated they flipped made a deal with the government so that they're free they're out that's why they're not in prison and then they're doing uh, YouTube shows and I watch a lot of them. I find them fascinating. Joy Merlino just did his time and he's got his own show and he's still like, he's, I mean, he never uh, turned his back on, on, on his way of life or anything. So that's kind of amazing uh, to, to me. But, 
But his show is a lot about sports, which I don't have an interest in. Uh, but he touches, of course, on the lifestyle a lot. But he was the boss of the Philly mob for a long time. During the wars, the Mickey Scarfo and John Stanford wars and fucking – and then it was John Stanfa fucking Merlino Wars. And anyway, um, that, 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 that's pretty uh, fascinating for me. But anyway, what I wanted to get uh, to, I hear a lot of them talk, you know, and, and when they talk about other mobsters, so often they refer to them as like, he's a good guy. You know, <laughs> even if they flipped and, and they've uh, denounced the life and they say, you know, uh, I was wrong and killing's wrong and, uh, now I just want to obey the law. That they still will refer to their peer murderers as, as good guys, <laughs> and that's that's always kind of fascinating. Well, which is actually how the name Goodfellas got its name, you know, from them just saying, "Yeah, he's a good fella." But yeah, he's a good fella. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but they all do that though. They'd be talking about, you know, yeah, so and so I knew him, man. He was a good guy to them. A good guy, Matt. You could count on him. You could trust him. He's not going to crack. He's not going to tell on you. Um, or it could mean, you know, he's he really believes in the life. You know, just like I said before about saying about Demora saying he loves the business. That would be a mobster saying, "Hey, this guy's all about the life." You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So how about that? Cool. Well, uh, what do you got cooking for us this week? So, so what I want to uh, put out there today, and I know this is going to help a lot of people. I don't know why, but I just feel really good about it. It's been a good vibe kind of day, really, for me. And uh, hopefully I'm sharing that uh, with everybody else. I want to talk about options because I believe that you always have options. And I don't think everybody realizes that, you know, but you might not like the options, but you pretty much always have options. You know, even the guy that says, hey, he told me to give him the money or he's going to kill my family. I mean, what choice did I have? Well, you could have given him the money or you could have not given him the money. You still had the choice, right? Some people use that as an escape goat, as if uh, they absolutely didn't have a, a choice. And, you know, there, there's times like that. Uh, like for instance, the one time I was in WWE and the fucking, uh, um, schedule has been so monotonous. I mean, it was really hard to bear through doing so many days in a row on the road with just a few hours break in between to go home, do laundry, get back on the road. It was a lot. And it was, you know, it was more stressful, um, with the work environment being as political as it was. And like some of the guys, I get tired of being around them, whatever. I got 10 days coming up where I'm off for Christmas. You know, I'm going to make it these last eight weeks to that 10 day break. I can do this. Boom. Seven weeks, boom, six weeks. Fuck. Yeah. This is coming up. We get a few weeks away from this break. That's been my main source of motivation to go from town to town renting a car every day, catching a flight every day, checking in and out of a hotel every day. Um, <clears throat> Johnny Ace calls a meeting with the talent and says that during this break for Christmas that we're going to be going overseas to visit the troops. And I did not take that as good news. I was looking forward to my day off. And he said, you know, um, this is, uh, uh, I think they handed out a, a piece of paper or something on it. But somewhere it said voluntary. And Johnny Ace, uh, you know, uh, after he gave the speech and stuff, he went around. And I, I don't remember if he had people individually, you know, signing up for it or, or whatever. But anyway, I just made it clear when I talked to him, I was like, uh, I won't be going on that, on that, you know, uh, just to let you know. And, and Johnny said, um, well, it's, it, it says it's voluntary, but they, they really don't, they really want you to go though. They expect you to go. And I'm like, I don't expect I'll be there, you know, so <laughs> they can uh, change their expectations. And he's like, it, it, it might be a problem if you don't go. And I'm like, I, you know, I, I, I <laughs> it might be a problem if you think I'm going to go. And uh, he was like, you know, well, I, well, you talk to Vince, you know, I'll talk to Vince and uh, we'll get back to you. Um, I ended up talking uh, to, to Vince 
that Vince says, uh, Rob, I understand that you uh, don't want to go to uh, Iraq or wherever the fuck it was. And um, I said, yeah, yeah, I'm in need of this uh, break that, that's coming up. And he said, yeah, I, well, I appreciate that, Rob. And I was like, cool. And he was like, but you're going to see this is going to be one of the best experiences of your lifetime. And I was like, no, I'm no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going. And he said, "Well, hold on there. Before you say that, just take some time and, and talk to some of the wrestlers that have been there before. Ask them about their experiences. I think a lot of them will tell you it was one of the best experiences of their lifetime." And I was like, "Boom!" You know, left that meeting. Uh, everyone started coming up to me and saying. Man, that's so awesome that you told him no, man. I wish I could say no. I don't I don't want to fucking go. Are you kidding me? And I'm like, well, why don't you tell them no? They're like, oh, I, I'm not, dude, I can't get away with that. And I was like, I don't have a no heat clause in my contract. I, I'm saying no because I'm not going to fucking go. And, and they were like, man, yeah, I just... I don't know, man. I don't know what would what would happen if I said that. And every and not everybody, but several of the boys came up and said that, you know. And some of them did say it was a good time. And others, when they uh, explained the trip, it sounded even worse than I imagined, or at least as bad. Everything from riding this huge airplane that sounds like a fucking warehouse in the sky with maybe even no seats on it. I don't know. It sounds. It just sounds weird and. You know, I, I, I'm I'm pretty happy with the experiences that I have. I'm not looking to add a whole lot of experiences. <laughs> anyway, and this was even several years ago, but this experience I didn't want. To go to the desert, to go to, you know, where they, people might hate us and there's a war. It wasn't even about all that, though. It was about me wanting, needing, taking this promised 10 days off. And... Um, <clears throat> I had to meet with Vince again. Um, no, I, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. This got to a point where, and I want to get off of the, the main subject, but it got to a point where at one point I wanted to fight Vince because I thought, hey, he really thinks he's got that control over me, like man to man. If I'm saying I will accept any consequences, I am not going, meaning you can fire me. What else does he think he can do on top of that? Like, is he... You know, am I? It, 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 we've talked before about my perspective of being the flesh and then being the flesh peddlers and having that whole perspective, right? So, yep. so I'm just a gladiator down there getting my fucking ear cut off tonight, you know, on a for, for their entertainment uh, while they're all making money. And that's that. That's how I've always. That is how it is. So that's that's the perspective anyway that, that I've always taken. So that, that made me take extra offense. Like I'm, I'm ready to rebel, whatever. I, I was outside Vince's door one time waiting and I was going to ask him to pick a hand and Paul talked me out of it. Another story. But um, he, you know, I, I felt like this guy really thinks he's got that much power over me. Like, like I am not fucking going like I I'll, I'll leave right now and go home. That's how I felt at the time. It got to be, where it was so important to me because of priority, you know, and I don't know, maybe ego, but mostly just uh, my my own self well being and, and knowing that I could have control over myself. It it got so important. Johnny comes up, uh, um, has a meeting again, the following week or whatever, and uh, he says that the location has been moved. So it was in what was considered a safe area. Now it's in an area that is considered semi-safe. And I think Qatar was either A or B, can't remember which at the time, pretty sure about that. And he says this time it really is gonna be volunteer. We can't make you go to this possibly unsafe uh, war zone on your own. And they looked right at me in front of everyone and said, Rob, I know you're not going. <laughs> Rob, I know you're not going. And I said, have fun, everybody. See you guys. <laughs> my, my point to that is those boys act like they had no option, as if they were shackled like prisoners and were going to be, um, you know, transported to the desert on the other side of the world against their will. That's how they treated it. You always... You always have options. 
You might not like the options, but if you think about it, you can list a few options. Very seldomly are you completely trapped uh, without without any options. And when I say options, you know, I'm talking about uh, an opportunity to react or an opportunity to act. That's that that's that's what an option is. It's it's an action. It's not a no action. And, and I'll get to that in a second. But um, basic thinkers uh, a lot of times will try to manipulate you and so will smarter people that just try to use this control method on you where they will try to act as if they had no options. The options were all on you. You know what I mean? Hey, you, Dom, you made me do that. I didn't want to hit you, but you made me do that. Really? That guy didn't have the option and I hit you, but people say that, you know, though, Hey, uh, you know, if you, if you say that, if you say that word again, I'm going to punch you in your mouth. That word again, bam. Hey, you made me say that. Well, I mean, really you chose, you had an option still after I said that to punch me or to cross that, you know, to cross that assault and battery line really, or, or to not punch me. But when they manipulate you like that, I don't know if that's what gaslighting is. I really don't know what the term means. I've heard of it referred to as that, like when a boyfriend tells the girl, it's all in your mind, honey. I'm not seeing anybody. And and really they are, you know, yeah. <laughs> they're talking gaslighting. someone else yeah. and, they, and, and they, they make the girl think she's going crazy by lying and saying, I, I don't really know what gaslighting means. Um, and it's and, it, and and that's different than trolling, which I've heard people use trolling in so many different ways that I'm not even sure what that means. You know, to yeah. me, <laughs> to me, trolling is when you go out of your way uh, to bring someone else down uh, for your own pleasure. Like you seek pleasure by by doing that, um, tagging somebody in and and giving them insults or whatever. And it's a sad miserable pathetic um action to take but to me that's that's what trolling is and there might be trolling in society maybe you know when you stalk people uh harass them that could possibly be to an extent but um <clears throat> but i think of it uh more like that um <clears throat> with the options it's like um what are my options? You know what I mean? Maybe my back was up against the edge of the cliff, but if I say I had no choice, I had no choice. I had no choice. What was I going to do? I could have jumped off. I'm not going to do that. And I'm certainly not telling people to kill themselves. But what I'm saying is when it comes to taking an action, you have the option to take that action or another action. What you don't have an option over is a non-action and when i say non-action that's you doing nothing somebody else you can't you don't have options over what someone else says about you someone's talking shit about you and it's not even true you don't really have the option whether that person talks shit that's not true about you or not you don't because in this equation what you're doing is nothing you're being you're being talked about that's not your option. You know, you could say long-term that you could take action that could change things. For instance, you know, uh, if this person, um, let's say, uh, how about this? Uh, a non-action and two, a non-action. You don't have options or, or anything to say about how someone else feels about you because not only are you doing nothing, they're doing nothing. They're just feeling. And you could say, you can go long-term, you can go big circle. You could say, well, I could take action to make them like me and make them change their mind so that they quit talking shit about me. You know, I could, uh, I could fucking make that my mission. But then you're really talking about changing the whole equation and all the factors in it and then reassessing it. So still, that doesn't really fit in with, the, with this uh, RVDology formula. I had, this is 2017, I believe, I had a WWE Legends deal uh, on the table to do uh, the Legends deal where you, they can make shit with your 
you you share your intellectual property rights with them for the term. Mm-hmm. Um, I also had at the same time a company in in England that was a startup company. AEW is doing great right now. When they first came out, and everybody said, "Wow, there's a new company." The owner has like Major League Baseball money. I've heard that so many times. You know, Brian Knobs had a uh, Major League Baseball investor several years ago that was going to be a new company, and they're going to have health insurance for the wrestlers. And there's always ones that start up and stuff. You know, we're talking about TNA now rebranding or whatever. I was saying I think they have whatever they need uh, to keep on moving forward because they seem to be complacent. And remember they started out with just pay-per-view. So maybe that's still their formula of where they get by. And I don't know why they're happy on that and not growing, or maybe that's changing. Uh, I don't know, but what I'm trying to get to is what AEW did was defeat the odds. You know, they really did go past that bubble of everyone trying to get to the next level and did it in a major way to where everyone's talking about them. And now, obviously, they're the uh, competitive show. This company in England wasn't looking to be the next uh, what AEW is, but they were a pretty good uh, deal, and I assume they had the money behind their plans. They were going to run 30, or maybe it was 35 weeks in a row. Oh. Uh, yeah, in England. And uh, they were paying me my fee. I was I had the choice to go back and forth first class every week or to stay over there the whole time or any combination thereof. Uh, they signed up a lot of guys. Um, it was good money for a minute. Um, they were growing. They didn't start out huge, but I think they did about five shows and it was bigger, bigger, bigger. The last show was like a really good show. Me and Ray Mysterio tagged over there, uh, against Moose and somebody, uh, but it was so fun and it was, it was good seeing them learn, um, how to, um, how to, um, do what they were doing. But it turns out that their money came from a video game company so i was told and so uh, when i had that legends deal from wwe i had an issue i was in a conundrum because wwe said i had to give them exclusive rights to my video game image i couldn't sign this deal with five star wrestling Mm -hmm. well five star wrestling was going to be a lot more money. Five Star Wrestling already gave me uh, a deposit. And the Legends deal was shrinking as it does when you're gone for a while. Mm-hmm. Some of the wrestlers I noticed, there's a video, they, they talk about their um, their royalties. I'm, uh, did I call it resume? The royalties on the fucking, uh, on, on YouTube. But you, the further your way, if they don't make stuff, it gets smaller and smaller. I had a conversation with Mark Carano where I was like, honestly, because you get a, an upfront guarantee, which a lot of the boys maybe need. You know, I, I don't know. I told Carano, I said, honestly, like my royalties, here's the last four or five of them. If you look at them, the way it's going, I said, uh, if I sign this deal and take your advance, I'm going to feel like I'm in debt for the next year and a half to pay it off, paying off the advance. It's it's not. (laughs) And these guys already got the money and we're already starting to rock and roll. So that's this, I had, I had two options, sign it, a three-year deal with WWE and Carano did talk about maybe making some new action figures or whatever. And um, okay. Sounds good. You know, to compare it to getting paid every week, 35 weeks in a row to wrestle, it wasn't comparable. I mean, the the five-star wrestling wasn't as sure, but it was the bird in, in my hand. If you haven't heard of the expression, I had a bird in the hand and a bird in the bush, which meant I couldn't see the other bird. That was an offer. And it wasn't like WWE is going to rescind an offer or do anything uh, illegal or shady or close down, not be able to follow through. But at the same time, they weren't doing nothing with my merch at the time. I went mm-hmm. with the bird in the hand, and I, and I signed up with the five-star wrestling instead. And because of that, I had no um, royalty 
merchandise legends deal with WWE. I I think Five Star Wrestling lasted five weeks, which was exactly what Carlito predicted it was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> five weeks then they closed down and i wasn't bitter you know the guys are pissed of course you know hey, it's this guy's fault that guy's fault i just said guys i enjoyed working with you you know good luck in the future sorry it didn't work out um and you know i got like five weeks worth of pay and fun and experience and it was cool me and katie went over there i would go over there and then I would stay uh, for a week until the next time, and then I'd come home. So got to stay and go, and I did I did both, and and it was a really cool experience. But I had that option, and obviously after the, they closed down, I was thinking about you know did I make the right option? But in the end, WWE still has to pay me anyway for my likeness with that deal or not. They're just not going to make anything uh, new with me but you know we still got to get paid a and other wrestlers like i might have mentioned that i tagged with uh during this conversation had said that he didn't have a deal with them for a long time but they just kept paying him anyway which they have to all right um anyway i'm talking about options and uh hopefully you can uh relate in a way that you have options you just might not like the options but when it comes to taking action you do you do have an option you can't say hey you know what was i gonna do i had to knock the guy out he was talking shit you could have opted to not knock the guy out and then you wouldn't be in jail <laughs> or be <laughs> sued or whatever but um options options Think about that this week until I talk to you again next week. When you find yourself in a predicament where you feel like you're stuck, think about it. There's other options that you could take. And you know what? Weigh them all out. Make sure you're taking the best option. Do it for you because you deserve it, fool. Boom. Yeah. You know, yeah, you always do have options. Sometimes you're so caught up in what you're doing that you necessarily don't think you have an option, but you really do if you just... And, and, and like I said, it's not your option what someone else thinks mm -hmm. about you or says about you because that's not you taking any action at all. That's completely something that's not even your business. So fuck them. People see what they're going to see. Don't let it bother you too much. We'll talk more about that on another one. How about that? How about that? Rob, before we go, I got to ask you about your Spicoli shirt. What's uh? Oh, show, yeah. Show Thank you. So, uh, new shirt, Pro Wrestling okay. Tees. Pro Wrestling Tees uh, just sent this to me. Uh, I got it um, just today in, uh, and put it on. And um, it's um, a new new shirt available at uh, PWT's Spicoli Driver. Oh, yeah. yeah. Represent, man. Yeah. Represent. Yeah. Good shit. Cool, Rob. Um, any plans for the weekend you got going on? Anything you want to plug too? Yeah, well, the next uh, booking that the that the fans uh, should care about is November 11th, which is the big event in in New Jersey. Oh. Uh, we'll do a show or two before then. This coming next weekend, uh, uh, well, the the following Halloween, uh, Katie is booked with. God, I was going to look it up before this so I don't fuck it up. Is it UWW? The women's, the United, the like, Universal Women Wrestling? One, I think it, was it the one she did a few weeks ago, too? Was it yeah, Yes. I'm looking them up right now because I meant to fucking. Man, I get a lot of fucking messages. <laughs> too many messages. Yeah, I'm going to try. Oh, it is UWW. It's UWW. And anyway, um, November, I think, 4th and 5th, I think. Um, why do we squint when we're thinking real hard? I don't That's know. That's almost as funny as the dance face. Dance, it's a dance face. Think huh? face. Think face. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Mr. Olympia in Orlando. She's going to be there at a booth for UWW and I may go down, go down and check that out as well. I'm planning on it, but someone else also made other plans. Um, so we'll see uh, what happens with uh, this fucking ongoing case that I got going on. Well, how about that? How it's about a that? concept. Mm. The, the, yeah, the, the, the guy. I can't wait to talk about it. 
this fucking douchebag that's been suing me for like four years trying to get some money oh. after a fight with me. And it just so happens that uh, this trial is a conflict with uh, this Orlando thing. So we'll see because it gets moved all the time, whatever. And we'll be able to talk a lot about it. But um, it's definitely at least an RV ideology episode on its own. Well, how about that? Yeah, she's a yeah. man. Yeah, I remember you mentioning that, and it's just like, yeah, that's I forgot about it. And so, like, it's like, man, yeah, not not fun to deal with that kind of shit. Total douchebag picked a fight with me, didn't like the results uh, for four years. Now he's just he does he's so stupid. I can't believe it's still going on. Unbelievable. Yeah, his deposition was so so far off from anything that happened. And it was all so provable from the video camera to the time, everything, everything. And, and I, but I guess, you know, what, what someone told me was that if lawyers have a client that's paying them, even if they know they're going to lose, they're going to keep it going until they stop getting paid. Right. Yeah. That's so, it. <laughs> great. But yeah. Anyway, I'm talking about that. You never know what someone else is going through. And uh, that's one of the many, 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 many things that uh, someday I'll reveal. You know, I'll be like, yeah, really? Back then, I didn't know that. Damn, damn. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool, guys. Yes, if you like what you're seeing and hearing, go to rvdpod.com, get the clips, get the episodes. Hey, we're on Rumble, too. So go to rumble.com. Uh, type in one of a kind with RVD and you can get the full episodes there. And every Monday, the episodes will air in full there for sure. Sometimes we have little complications getting them up on YouTube and stuff like that. Just with what's the, you know, how the algorithm works or whatever, but you'll get them on rumble. If you go there, give us five. Cause, your mouth, Cause you swear so much. I curse so fucking much. Too Knock much. it the fuck off, bro. You know, I, I gotta fucking stop. It's too fucking hard, but so yeah, do that. Follow Rob on to oh, Rob on Twitter at the Real RVD. Follow me on Twitter at Dominic D'Angelo. Hit up the Premier Streaming Network if you want to catch these episodes early every Friday at 4:20 p.m. But you can check us out everywhere at Monday, 4:20 p.m. Eastern Standard and Time. If you want me to keep doing these RVDology segments, hit the fucking uh, like below. Hit the like down below and hit that subscribe. Best part of the oh. show. Oh, you know what? Can we talk about Twitter for a second? Yes, we can. Let's talk about Twitter. <laughs> um, I was on yesterday. You, you know, you saw it. Uh, talking to some some people, that, sensitive people that get offended and they think they have a, a subject they can cancel, but they don't realize they're just dipshits that, that take everything wrong. Um, but anyway... Um, that that was that was referring to oh yeah and then I saw there's a video today that says um, I don't even want I don't, I don't know if I say it now it might be taken from it and make more headlines uh, but don't do that on our page anyway but um, yeah okay that, there was a thing like a two hour episode and, and it says I read I don't know if it said accuses uh, Dave Meltzer of being gay or something and um, <laughs> but what what the comment I don't know somebody had a comment. And it was something about um, how come Dave um, doesn't like people being over 50, something like that. I'm totally paraphrasing. It's not exactly what it was. But I just um, was responding with a thought-provoking question, and I just used Dave to anchor into that. You know what I mean? Like, I like I could give a fuck about, you know, what, what he prefers. Yeah. But, but anyway, I just said, I wonder if, um, if there's, I don't know, like a, a homoerotic... Um, reason behind wanting and i said it i don't know somewhere i put comma and maybe 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 some people and i said like maybe like dave and just kind of to be funny and anchor it off but anyway i I could give a fuck you know everyone jumped on that but um because i guess there's been some talk and so they think that i'm you know that i'm bringing up some shit that's already been said some facts or miss facts or, or whatever, some rumors and nothing to do with any of that. I totally don't give a fuck. Um, but what I, but what I did was trying to say though, was, um, you know, cause wrestling is, I mean, if you think about it, if you want to take a homoerotic, um, perspective of wrestling and you, and you can't see that 
there's something wrong with you. Look yeah. at uh, look at the very first statues of wrestling in the from the Greek mythology of Hercules suplexing the guy that's holding onto his cock. <laughs> they're both <laughs> and they're both naked. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, do you want to see it? It's very famous. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a Greco-Roman thing, right? Yeah, you've you've seen it probably, right? Mm -hmm. but, um, this uh, this guy, right? Oops. Hey, hey, hey. God damn it. Technology. This guy. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> the, the old very famous, guy. very famous statue. Or maybe he's, yeah, he's suplexed him, side suplex, I think. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, so gay people, like, what? Someone used the word gay? He's a homophobe, and they and they go after you know, and they and then they jump up, and it's it's stupid. So I don't. It's something I should ignore. But then, uh, um, anyway, what my point was um, was that like men or boys, males say they want to like when they watch wrestling, they they would prefer watching males that are closer to their age right mm -hmm. yeah Sometimes. not a say but 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 for the for this purpose they would they, they would rather watch somebody regardless maybe regardless of uh the way the person looks or or the moves or or something else the wrestling could be judged on but they feel like they can relate more and therefore prefer people closer to their age and if you want to look at it from a homoerotic um position you got to be open-minded enough to think about it this way but hang with me here um it's it, it, i think it's part of living vicariously through that person and even that a little bit um uh can be you know like a like like uh like he like um in a man crush kind of way, you 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 can worship another dude enough to where you want to be him, and if you really want to be him in his skin, and you don't think that that's a little gay, then then you're not gonna get what I'm saying at all, and people are gonna be offended and come uh, and come forward with this. Um, but I remember um, when F Finley was wrestling, and I thought, you know, well, he's definitely the old guy. He's got white hair, and uh, you know, um, and he, he's a badass though, you know, but I remember like thinking of him, like he's real old and it stands out. Everyone else so young when he was doing his run, but then he was stretched. He could stretch everybody too. But I remember it was, uh, that was interesting. Um, man, there was somebody, I forgot who it was, but when I was younger, it seems like there was somebody too. And I remember thinking, you know, like I didn't want to see them as much just because I couldn't relate to them as much. You know what I mean? Yeah. Per personally, I think, and this is a whole nother episode to talk about, but whether this is uh, right or wrong or works for you personally, I think even, I feel like even like a, a self physical worship in a certain way can feel gay to me. And I'll mm -hmm. give you an example. Um, I've had friends that are like, and, and they're lonely. I get it, and they don't have anyone to bounce off of to get their and to get feedback off of to judge themselves, and that's part of it. But I've had uh, friends that are be, that are like, you know, I I think a woman would be would, should be happy to have me. You know what I mean? As a boyfriend, I, I think I'm good looking, don't you, Rob? I mean, I'm, I'm in. I mean, I'm in decent shape, don't you think? Don't you think I'd be a pretty good catch? I'm like, dude, I don't want to think of you that way. But <laughs> but to him, it, you know, it, it's like just an open, honest conversation. Uh, but to me, it, it's a little bit too much into the bromance for me to feel like really comfortable. And that's just me. And I'm not saying that everyone else should be like that. Um, and you know, and that doesn't make me uh, a homophobe, but for me, uh, I'd be fine if there was no mirrors in the house. I've seen my face enough over the years, you know what I mean? And, and Katie knows that about me. She obviously, she knows me better than anybody knows me. And that's one of the many things that she has to take about me, you know, and that I might be different than other people, but I can't, she 
she loves she'll get stuck in the mirror and she's always been like that she'll be looking in the mirror at herself and her mom used to tell her to get away from the mirror when she was uh, a <laughs> growing up um but for me you know it's like dude no i don't enjoy looking at myself and like i don't understand because I feel like that. I don't understand my male friends that do, you know, that I'd be like looking at themselves in the, in, in the mirror and being like, I, I think I'm pretty handsome. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm a 10, but you know, I'd say I'm about a dude. How are you going to fucking judge yourself? Like, what is that? Yeah. What is that? That's in scale and comparison to other dudes. Like, I don't, I don't know for me. Let me add this too, which I think might be true. And again, I said they don't have someone to bounce, you know, get feedback from to judge them, but to get their own opinion, um, which is a part of all of us. You know, if you grow up and every kid at school tells you that you're ugly, you're going to believe you're ugly. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's just the way it is. But um, I I heard this once and I liked it and it was easy for me to see which side of the fence I fall on if this is in fact true. But I, it was the, the, the expression was that uh, some men get their um, their sense of what was the word masculinity from women, and some men get it from other men. Mm. Yeah, Not the masculinity. I guess they're they're male behaviors i don't know is that masculinity i probably thought yeah so so when i heard that i asked a friend and he was like i think that's true and i was like would you believe agree that like you're on the side towards men you know just and it was like yeah yeah just because like you know i compare myself in the gym to other guys and that's how i gauge my own my own self and my own masculinity and and i was like yeah i think that sounds true and i'm not like that i don't even notice other people, whatever. And I judge mine more off of uh, females and I'd like to be surrounded with females. I like to be the only guy on property. We've talked about that. Yep. Yep. Um, if I have a, a, a son, he has to be thrown to the ocean. Uh, just like, you know. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, I was talking about that as far as wrestling goes, you know, how you could see it from that perspective, but, um, and, and for, for whatever, if you're offended or not, go ahead and leave me comments, but, um, there, there's not more of a point to that, but, but there is to, uh, where the, the conversation went somewhere where I was talking about me and I was just saying, I know that 52 year old RVD would beat the shit out of 25 year old RVD. Yeah. And, uh, and somebody was like, wow, that's that's hard to imagine. And that like really surprised me that, that it's so weird for me to think that people see me as vulnerable because I don't see myself as vulnerable. So it's so weird that they would think that. So like the the 25 year olds think that they're going to that they're going to kick my ass or something. Cause it's, and then somebody responded, maybe it was the same one saying it's really hard to imagine a 52 year old beating up a 25 year old. And I was like, wow, like that is amazing. Maybe, maybe I felt like that when I was 25. I don't know, but it's so fucking amazing now to, to think of that from my perspective. Uh, cause I was such a child when I was 25, you know? And, uh, and when you look at a lot of the really young guys that are wrestling, you know, that are they're, they're some of them are, you know, smaller because they're still growing. You're, you're still growing, you know, in your, in your, in your twenties and shit. But, um, <clears throat> One thing that I wanted to say was, okay, so you got Billy Gunn versus one of his kids. Who's your money on? Right, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) How is that so hard to imagine? You know what I mean? Yeah. uh, Anyway, I feel awesome. Had uh, enjoyed the match. Hope to uh, get back in the ring again really quick because uh, uh, I feel better every time. And uh, and now I'm already critiquing myself. I'm going to get a little higher on this, a little faster on that. Boom, boom, boom. Trade in some, do some moves no one else has seen. And hey, don't be stealing my fucking uh, corkscrew leg drop on the back, yo. That was fucking cool. Rob, you never seen that shit before, have you? Didn't see it. No, I was like, has Rob done that before? Because I never saw it happen anywhere. So it was good shit. It was damn good, Rob. Damn uh, I ain't done, bro. You ain't copy done. my shit. That don't mean I'm stepping aside. Boom. Fuckers. You gotta. <laughs> Rob will bring it, all right? We'll bring it here next week. I want to time to see you next week.
Have a good week, everybody. Yep, see you guys. I was waiting for some kind of sign, some kind of indication. I was wasting my time.